Hey everybody, it's Rob from Copper Barn Homestead. Hey, this short video is about the uh, problem I had starting this 1025R the other day. And I just have to let everybody know that this video was made not as an instructional purpose video, but simply as entertainment and what I did to get my tractor running again and get this thing fixed. So don't take any advice from me. I'm not a mechanic. If you do so, you may be subject to personal damage or tractor damage or who knows it could all just go tragic so anyway i'm not a mechanic i'm not an instructor uh view this use the information as you see fit as you're able to i suggest if you have a problem with your tractor you read the manual and take it to the dealership have a good one y'all hope you enjoy the video don't forget to like subscribe and we do love your comments see ya Hey everybody, so today I'm going to do a little video with my 1025R, it should be short. Uh, this tractor the other day I needed it and it would not start. So I actually went through the troubleshooting uh, that day and found what the problem was, found a way around it. Uh, and now today about a week later I've got the part so I'm going to fix it. And I'll kind of go through the steps that I took to figure out what was going on with it. Enjoy! Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share. We do love your comments. Have a good one! Okay, so about a week ago, it was super cold, and I needed this tractor, and it would not start. And so, the first thing I did was put it on the battery charger to make sure the battery wasn't too low to start, and I'll show you what it did. When I went to start it, I turned the key, and it would not start. Now, it has a couple safety features, one of which is... If it were in gear, which it is now, but you see when it's in gear, the dash tells you to switch to neutral or shift to neutral. So I knew it wasn't that, put it in neutral. And so the next thing I thought was maybe the solenoid or something was wrong with the starter because I'd already made sure the battery was fully charged. So on these particular tractors, they have a hood release, kind of automotive style, Get one handed there. And the battery is right there. So I put my battery jump box on it and didn't get anything else. So then I thought uh, there are relays and some fuses. So I went ahead and checked those and I'll show you where they're at. Okay, to get to the relays and fuses, you have to take this bolt out and remove this side cover. So I'll do that. Okay, once the bolt is removed, basically just pull back on this cover. So slide it back and it lifts off. Okay, and here are the fuses and the relays. And here is a sticker that tells you which fuses and relays go to what. Okay, and according to this, the F9 fuse, which is this yellow, uh, what is it? Looks like it's, I don't know. Uh, it's, okay, it's a 20 amp, a yellow 20 amp fuse is the fuse for the ignition. <clears throat> so I pulled it out with a needle <clears throat> needle nose pliers and that fuse, you can see it, if it'll focus. Anyway, that fuse is good. It's not broke. So put that back in and that's what I did when it was like, I think it was 12 degrees. 14 degrees, something like that that day it was cold. So the other item is 
K2, which is the third spot down or second one up. So it's this one is the relay for the starter. And so I pulled that one out and I got looking at these relays and they're exactly the same. So I actually just switched it with the other one and I didn't get any changes. The other thing that I've got is Bill across the street has this exact tractor. So I actually went over and took his relay and put it in here. Also did not change anything. Okay, so at this point, I decided to try to jump past the solenoid like we used to do with our own farm trucks. And so the starter is under this cover. So again, taking out that screw, sliding back, there's the starter. Turn that off so we can hear the fuel pump clicking. Okay, so here is the starter. Okay, so here is the power from the battery. Here is the trigger wire that you can unplug from there. Now then, when you get the thing so it operates correctly, when you get the key to turn and engage, it'll light up that switch. And that's what it was not doing the other day. Okay, so what I did was put a trigger wire on the input for that wire from the ignition. And then I attached that to a screwdriver. I used the cheapest, oldest one I could find. And we used to do this with our old trucks when the solenoids would go out. Now it says right here, do not do that. I mean, it shows you exactly how to do it, but it says don't. And that's a good point if this is in gear and I'm sure people have done this, you can get severely injured. But if we get 12 volt from the battery to that trigger wire, that will open the switch and allow this starter to start this tractor, or should. But there is another safety feature somewhere in the system that doesn't allow you to do that. Okay, so now, and I only did that to show you guys what I did that day. Uh, again, I was getting no power from this trigger wire that comes from the ignition. So I'll plug that back in. Uh, on some of the forms that I read, it said that this wire coming unplugged is a frequent cause of these little 1025Rs to not start. So now I had pretty much, though, ruled out the battery being weak as the problem and also i knew that the starter works so i had pretty much limited the problem now to my ignition switch is what i figured so now that i had decided that this switch was the problem and again i'll show you it still doesn't start i had to figure out how to get that out of there and this is where another problem came in. So I took my screwdriver and I tried to pry on it. And what I ended up doing is if you can see that, I broke the edge of that off. But when I broke that off, I saw that, first of all, it popped out, but I saw that what you should do if you need to remove this switch is push down from the top. There's a little foot that releases and it pops right out. So if you have to do this repair, be careful and don't tear your dash up like I did. Now then I've bought a plastic welder and I'm gonna try to weld that up. And it's not the end of the world, it still definitely works, but uh, it would have been nicer if my dash wouldn't have broke. Okay, so now that I had the ignition switch out of the dash, I unplugged the wires. And it looks like there's six. No, there's not. There's five outlets there. Okay, so I took my 12 volt tester again and I checked the three tabs on the switch. So there's power, live power. So one of these should be power to the 
uh, dash, fuel pump, all that, and the other should be the actual power that triggers that switch uh, that allows the starter to actually engage. So let's see what else we've got here. Okay, so now with the key in it and on with the ignition on, right? So this tab and that tab and this one, the three here, are the only ones that have wires that go to them back there on that plug. So I took my continuity tester and tested between these tabs to find out which two are connected with the ignition on. Okay, so with our plug, I'm trying to look at the camera while I'm doing this. There are only three wires here. There's one in the top left, one in the middle right, and one on the bottom. And when we check these for power, the bottom has no power to it. The top left has no power to it. I wish you can see that. There you go. But the one on the right has 12 volt to it all the time. Oh, there's test, test, test. Nothing but the one on the right has power. Okay, so now I've got the key on on this switch so the ignition would be on. And I'm going to check to see what we've got between those three terminals. Okay, so there's continuity between the one that has 12 volt live all the time and the top left. That means that for the ignition to be on, right, power's coming in here and flowing out this terminal, which means this terminal has to be the one that engages the starter. What I'm trying to do is tie all these terminals together at once. Yeah. Well, I can hold the camera. Yeah. What I could do is just put the new switch in it and it'd be fixed. <laughs> but it might not be. Might not be it. Well, I mean, that would be it. That'd be great for me. It yeah. wouldn't make much of a video. Okay. Okay, start filming. You know what I mean? uh -huh. Okay, so what I've done is build a completely hillbilly jumper mechanism, but I've got the power to the ignition, and now I'll push this one into the terminal for the starter itself. And it started. Okay, and that was how I got it started uh, the other day. But now what I'm gonna do is put my new switch that I ordered off eBay. Actually, I think this was Amazon, but Exact same switch to have this fixed. Simply plugs in, shoves in. And of course, I've got my busted dash that I showed you guys. <laughs> and John Deere key. Okay, so that was what I went through on my 1025R when it wouldn't start the other day. And actually, this switch uh, looks fairly beat up. I don't know if somebody ever tried to use a screwdriver on that instead of the key. But anyway, what it would do was this the switch got to the point that you could turn it and it wouldn't uh, start. I figured out that if you played with it quite a bit, jiggling the key and stuff, it could it would eventually start. I could figure out how to get it to start but it wasn't a combination that I wanted to deal with every day while I use this tractor. So it's got a new switch in it and put it all back together and back in business. This is my sawdust removal tractor for the most part, <laughs> along with my lawnmower and everything else that I use with it. So thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share. We do love your comments. Have a good one, y'all. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bye, guys. <laughs>